Welcome to Messiah Worship. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us this day as we praise our God and we give our thanks for all that God has given to us. We continue our Lenten journey with Jesus as we journey towards Jerusalem and to the cross where we see God's great love for us. Please do reach out and contact us with any questions or concerns that you have. A big thank you to everyone who has already scheduled to give the gift of life at our March 21st blood drive. You can register online and more details are in the e-newsletter. Also want to remind you, if you're watching this before 9.45 on Sunday, we'd love to have you join us for our fellowship time, just a time to get together and catch up with other Messiah members and family. Also, we have Sunday school at 10.15 and confirmation at 11 o'clock. These are all via Zoom and you can find the links in your e-newsletter. Also there, you will find information about our midweek Lenten Bible study, Walk Dusty. There are links there for the Zoom meetings of several small groups that are gathering during this time. We'd encourage you to do so. Even if you have not met the past weeks, you are welcomed at any of those at any time. Also, I want to say a word of thanks to everybody who has stepped up and volunteered to help us with our Easter worship. You can still help us out. Just send me an email or give me a call. Worship on Easter Sunday, April 4th, will be at 10 a.m. It will be in the east portion of the Ralston High School parking lot. More details will be coming out about that. A big thank you to everyone who is praying for our family and for our loved ones. The prayer list is in your Sunday morning e-newsletter. Contact us to add your concerns. Let us now begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. We gather to worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws close to us in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear Privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. God in prayer. We have trials and tribulations. Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. It It to the Lord in prayer. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this morning is from the 21st chapter of Numbers. First, a brief introduction. Though God provides food and water for the Israelites in the wilderness, they whine and they grumble. They forget about the salvation they experienced in the Exodus. God punishes them for their sin, but when they repent, God also provides a means of healing, a bronze serpent lifted up on a pole. Here begins the reading. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on their way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the second chapter of Ephesians. The introduction reads, While we were dead in our sinfulness, God acted to make us alive as a gift of grace in Christ Jesus. We are saved not by what we do, but by grace through faith. Thus our good works are really a reflection of God's grace at work in our lives. Here begins the reading. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived. Following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places and Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of work, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, I'm sure that uh, you have uh, seen the drawings and you're familiar with those that illustrate uh, two images in one. Here is an example. What do you see? Do you see the man playing the saxophone or the woman's face? Or how about this one? Do you see the old woman's face or the younger woman's? And pause if you need to, to take a look at the images. They're good for training the eye to see both the dark and the light. Well, in our first lesson today, we have the classic snake on a stick story, as my worship professor Mark Oldenburg likes to call it. It is a story of judgment and healing. The Israelites, they've been kvetching against God. The Back to Egypt committee has been working overtime. Oh, if we were only back in Egypt. Yes, we were enslaved. No, we couldn't worship God. Yes, we were crying out, but at least we had something to eat. (laughs) Reminds me of the joke in Woody Allen's movie, Annie Hall. There are two women who are at a Catskills Mountain retreat, and one of them says, boy, The food here is just really terrible. And the other one says, yeah, I know, and such small portions. So for the Israelites, because they had been complaining against God, God sends snakes to bite them, and they die. And that gets a response out of the people. Oh, Moses, we're so sorry. We shouldn't have spoken out against God like that. Help us. Pray to God to save us. And so Moses does. And God has Moses build the bronze snake on a stick. And all who look upon it live. Judgment and healing. And of course, the irony of the story is that God arranges it so that the people had to look on the very thing that had brought them their troubles. They had to look on the very thing that would remind them of their complaining against God, their sin against God, their lack of trust and devotion to the very one who had given them freedom and who had re-established their identity as God's chosen. They had to look on that same snake that had bitten them in order now to see and to receive healing and hope. Darkness and light. So now, fast forward to Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus. Jesus says, just like the snake on a stick story... I too must be lifted up. I too will be the source of conviction and redemption. And so we look at the cross and we ask ourselves, what do we see? Do we see the very thing that has brought us to our troubles? 
our lack of trust and devotion in God? Do we see our failure to live in the relationship God has given us? Or do we see what God has given us? What we need, whether we're ready to ask for it or not, whether we deserve it or not. Look to Jesus on the cross and see our sin, our sickness, everything that is wrong with us and the world. Things that we are fully aware of and so ashamed of. Things we know and try to hide from others and from God. The things we don't see because of our biases and our love of the darkness. The things we refuse to admit to because we have too much to lose if we confess them. Do we see that? Look to Jesus on the cross and also see God's great unconditional love see our salvation and our hope see an all-encompassing love that stretches out its arms and says this is how much I love you see a love that took on all of our sin known and unknown seen and unseen and wiped it away A love that gives in return a second and third and fourth and fifth chance. See hope and a way out even out of the darkest situations. See divine love that makes us new and frees us to be who God intended and created us to be. Now, All of this, seeing both our demise and our new life in the single image of Jesus on the cross creates a crisis for us, or at least it should. As Jesus is lifted up, we are lifted up. And not into a transactional decision. You know, if I pray the right prayer, then Jesus will accept me. It's not like a navigational problem to be solved, you know, saying, oh, well, if I just go here and do this or go there and do this, then all will be well. But instead, it's about this Jesus lifting us up into relationship, into that place where we are able to love God and God loves us. And through that, we love others. The crisis then comes as we ask ourselves the question, well, so what do I do with this when I have been lifted up? Do I live in that relationship? Do I live in the light? Am I willing to be humbled and exposed for who I am as a sinner and at the same time be illuminated as to who I have become in Christ the saint? Will I live in this divine love that reveals my non-love but then envelops it in the great love? Are we, as we are lifted into this relationship, willing to live in the life God gives us instead of living in the life we want and we think we should choose? How do we respond? Will we be a part of that relationship? Will you become God's hands, God's heart to those who are only able to see the the brokenness and the hopelessness? Will you let others see in you God's great love? Will others be lifted up into that relationship with the living God because of you or Will they be repelled by your refusal to live in Christ? Will you keep Christ to yourself, saying, oh, my faith is private, which is such a lie. It may be personal, but it's never private. So what do we see? Let's pray. Oh God, in your son Jesus, lifted on the cross, we are convicted and acquitted. 
We see our chains and we see our liberation. We see condemnation and absolution. We see our darkness and your light. Help us, we pray, to live in what you have given us. May our deeds be deeds of light that are done in your name and to your glory. Amen. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my ransomed soul shall find rest beyond a trembling soul love and mercy found me there the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my ransom soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross O Lamb of God bring it scenes before me help me walk my glory ever till my ransom soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross I'll watch and wait hoping trusting confess our faith, the faith of the church. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries. 
Bible translators, and ministries of service in your name. Bless our partners in ministry in Kukati, Gethsemane, and South Sudan, and the young adults in global mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts, wilderness areas and cities. Give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures. Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. By grace we have been saved. Fill this congregation to overflowing with that grace, that we may show mercy to others. Nourish any in our midst who are hungry, especially children, and bless our ministries of feeding and shelter. Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your Son was lifted up that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Share that peace of Christ with all you encounter this day and in the days to come. This is a time in our worship when we respond to God's goodness and grace by giving of what we have first received. Would you pray with me? Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us as we share what you have given us that others may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you for the gifts that you share with our ministry here at Messiah. Options for giving may be found on our website and through the e-newsletter, or you may mail your donations to the church office. Please know that God is making a difference through you and our ministry together. Thank you. We also celebrate that in the bread and the wine, we continue to know that Christ is present with us to offer God's unconditional love and the forgiveness of our sins and to nourish us in our journey. Please continue to use the resources we have provided for you to celebrate Holy Communion. The resources are home communion during separation and can be found in our e-newsletter. For through this we know that Jesus draws the whole world to himself. So come to his meal and be fed. And now receive the benediction. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. I'm not a warrior. I'm too afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what 
you're calling me to do. But Lord, with your strength, I've got no excuse. Cause broken people are exactly who you use. So give me faith like Daniel in my life. in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.